Guys, not too long ago, I showed you some of the fastest gaming laptops from 2022. But this year, things are about to get pretty nuts. And it all starts today with the launch of Intel's 13th gen Raptor Lake mobile CPUs, along with Nvidia's RTX 4000 laptop GPUs. So what I have in front of me is the MSI GT77 Titan, the 2023 model with a flagship Core i9-3980HX and an Nvidia RTX 4090. So it's not the same specs as the desktop card, but as far as laptop graphics cards go, this thing is impressive for gaming. And yes, if you're a creator, this thing has you covered. Anyways, the crazy part of this is how close this thing can come close to desktop CPU performance. AMD is really pushing Intel to innovate these days, and the results, I'm not gonna lie, are super, super impressive. Because when you compare it to Cinebench, to two desktop systems running Intel's other high-end CPUs, it can actually beat the 12900K by about 10%. That's Almost unbelievable, guys. And it isn't just synthetic benchmarks like Cinebench either. Real-world CPU-focused apps like Maya, Blender, and Houdini all show it beating the desktop, sometimes by a pretty big amount too. I mean, sure, it still weighs off from the 3900K, but seeing a laptop compete with and beat a top dock CPU that was launched a bit over a year ago shows you how far laptop architectures have come and maybe how much the desktop side has stagnated too. Now, there's a good reason for why this processor is doing so good in a laptop, and it all boils down to how Intel's approaching their new ultra high-end CPUs because they're throwing more cores, more frequencies, more power, and more heat output into them, at least for the HX series. So let me explain this. Basically, the HX series is sitting above the standard H series processors by running in a power range of between 55 and 157 watts, right across the entire lineup. What's really different this time around is Intel's adding more performance and efficiency cores across almost the entire stack. That means the 3900HX series right at the top are a bunch of 32 threaded beasts with 36 megabytes of L3 cache, so eight threads and six megabytes more than the best Alder Lake laptop and desktop processors from last year. So other than some minor architecture changes, the ability to cram in more cores into the CPU is one of the reasons why you're seeing a Raptor Lake mobile CPU beating a previous gen desktop in multi-threaded apps. It simply has more threads to work with, guys. I also need to address the GT77 Titan as well, because this is meant to be a sort of tech demo. And yes, it's one that you can actually buy, but it's a really niche device, guys. MSI has designed this in partnership with Intel and NVIDIA as something that highlights what today's fastest mobile CPU and GPU can do when being pushed close to their absolute highest power limits. This thing sets a benchmark, but one that's gonna be pretty unrealistic for other laptops with the same combo. This laptop also comes with some sacrifices too, other than MSI's dodgy build quality for such an expensive device. I mean, honestly, I think they could have done a little bit better. Uh, you can call it a desktop replacement, but that's debatable on a ton of points that I won't get into here. Either way, it is still technically a portable laptop. And I mean, technically, since the GT77 is a thick boy with a stupidly big 330 watt power brick that's almost the size of a Dell XPS 13. And it also weighs more than the XPS 13 too. But let's be honest. This thing is gonna be spending most of its time taking up the same footprint as an ITX case on your desk. But there is a positive trade-off to all of this, which is performance, because with such a huge amount of space, MSI was able to juice this thing up with tons and tons of power. I mean, it comes with a 330 watt adapter, and so they are putting it to good use. Because the i9-3900HX is pushed all the way to 134 watts in its extreme performance mode, and 120 watts in balanced. Now sure, the processor does get a bit toasty in both modes, but it's still far enough away from Intel's 100 degree T-junction, and that's nothing to worry about. Meanwhile, the other two modes pretty much cripple the CPU in order to either maximize battery life or just stay as silent as possible. The RTX 4090 gets in on the action too by hitting between 145 watts and 165 watts in all modes except battery saver. And it stays pretty cool too, which proves MSI's cooling system is doing a pretty good job. Frequencies also stay above Nvidia's upper two gigahertz boost clock spec in both balanced and extreme performance mode. But it does come with a drawback because this is by far the loudest laptops we've ever come across, like ever. Even balance mode gets above our 50 decibel comfort zone. So look, it's great if you're using headphones, but otherwise just do your ears a favor and just stick to silence. The only problem there is that you're gonna 
smash face first into lower performance mode too. And so that's definitely something that you don't want to experience when you're paying so much money for a laptop of this caliber. The other issue actually comes from the Raptor Lake mobile CPU architecture. Now, while Intel lists the HX series as having memory speeds of DDR5 5600, that's only in the best case scenario because these processors come with dual memory channels and a lot of laptops, but not the MSI here, will end up coming with two memory slots. In that kind of situation, with 16 gigabytes or 32 gigabytes installed, the maximum speed is DDR5 5600. But jump to 64 gigabytes with two 32 gigabyte modules and it drops to DDR5 5200 since 32 gigabyte modules are dual rank. The problem really lies in the designs with four memory slots like the Titan. Even with just 64 gigabytes installed across two 32 gigabyte dual rank modules, speeds drop to DDR5 4000. Now add another two sticks like what MSI does with their 128 gigabyte model that costs $700 more than this one, and you're getting cut all the way back to 3600. So while you may have an insane amount of memory capacity, performance is gonna drop like a stone. Now what about battery life? I mean, look, do you really expect an almost eight pound laptop to be carted around all the time? Probably not, but you can still get away with it, sorta, since the Titan gets some of the worst numbers we've seen in a while. And as the overall load increases, it slides further and further backwards, when the only thing that really saves time away from the plug being the massive 99.9 watt hour battery. Even that can't save it when under a heavy load though. So yeah, you're certainly sacrificing something here. So that sets the stage for the benchmarks. And in order for you to get the completely full picture of what this thing can actually do and can't do, I'm gonna be testing in both balanced and extreme performance modes. And right away, there's almost no comparing this refreshed GT77 to anything that's been available before mostly because of the extra processing threads and the additional power being fed into the CPU versus the previous generation Titan. The single core results bring things a bit closer, but the 13th gen CPUs still have a significant advantage here since they can consistently hit higher single thread speeds than previous architectures. The other results from heavy multi-threaded real world apps pretty much show the same thing as Cinebench. When it's given enough power, the 3980HX can absolutely dominate against even the fastest high-end gaming laptops from 2022. And we're not talking about a small amount either, since in some programs, there's a good 40% performance increase over the 12900HX. And remember, this is within a single generation. But this also raises another question. How will performance of these new CPUs align when they aren't being given an insane amount of power? Because realistically, most high-end laptops can only budget between 90 watts and 110 watts for the CPU. Now, the only small hiccup here is Photoshop, but this feels more like a program optimization problem rather than a major issue. Adobe Premiere is another program that doesn't really see any improvements by moving to a 13th gen and RTX 4090 combo, and that's a bit surprising. But it's also something we've seen on the desktop side as well, so hopefully Adobe and NVIDIA can get their optimization sorted out pretty soon. Because Resolve proves what something like the GT77 can really do. When you couple NVIDIA's dual encoders with a fast CPU, render speeds get exponentially fast versus even the fastest 2022 laptop. And what about gaming? Well, that's a big question, isn't it? So what I'm gonna do is just let the results run their way through since there's only so many ways that I can say this thing is ridiculously stupidly fast compared to some of the other laptops. And if you want a specific resolution, so like 1080p, 1440p, and 4K, they're all marked into the timestamps down below. And once again, we did test this laptop in both extreme and performance, extreme, extreme performance and balance modes. <laughs> a lot of modes. Let's get into it, guys.
the numbers really do speak for themselves, guys. The GT77 is fast as hell. It takes gaming on a somewhat portable laptop to a whole new level. And when you combine that with real world results, this is one of, if not the fastest laptop that you can buy right now. But there's just more to this than just a bunch of hype because everything we've seen here is impressive. And yet you have to take it with a grain of salt because this is one device that's been handpicked by Intel and Nvidia to showcase what's possible in an absolute best case scenario with the CPU and GPU being fed with almost ridiculous amounts of power. In fact, it's just so much power than what most other new laptops will offer. So unlike in the desktop space where you can pretty much guarantee a processor or graphics card will perform pretty close to benchmark results, that doesn't necessarily happen with laptops because only a handful of devices will come anywhere close to hitting this kind of performance. And most with the exact same CPU and GPU combo will probably be a whole lot slower since they will be power or temperature limited. Either way, it's still great to see what the fastest laptop around can actually do right now. And honestly, I can't wait to see what the rest of the year is gonna be like for gaming laptops, especially uh, with stuff coming from Razer, Asus, Acer. I think it's gonna be a great year for competition. On that note, thanks so much for watching. I hope you were able to take away everything that you needed to know about Intel's new 13th gen HX series CPU and paired with Nvidia's crazy fast 4090 laptop GPU. Are you guys seriously impressed with its performance? Chime in the comments. I'm Eber with Hardware Connects, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. And uh, don't forget to spend responsibly.